next guest is truly a force to be reckoned with. He's the leading man on Star's new hit show, Power Book 4 Force, and he's here to spill the tea on the season finale. We just love this man. Please welcome Joseph Sakura. Hey! 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 Welcome hey. to the show, so Joseph. Good to be here. We're oh. so excited to have you. Now, you're originally from Chicago, and before you attended Columbia College, Chicago, you were actually kicked out of another theater program. Tell us all about what happened. Well, it, yeah, I was asked to leave another uh, program. Um, I think like a lot of things in life, not everything is the right fit. Um, I was, uh, I, I wanted questions and they didn't necessarily have answers. And I think a lot of times um, theater schools kind of present themselves as this, I don't know, semi-cult guru type thing. And I, I'm, I'm much more of a practicalist. How do we get from A to B to C? And so I ended up going to Columbia College, Chicago, mm. and I'm a proud CCC <laughs> alum. Nice. Uh, where all of the people, all of the teachers there are professionals in the industry. So instead of being taught by professional teachers, I was taught by professional directors and professional lighting designers and professional actors. So uh, it's a different kind of education that uh, really worked for me. Wow. I need to tell you, I love you in Ozark, man. When Ruth was yeah. like bossing you around and you were all aloof, like you don't know what's going on, I really was like, is he that like innocent in real life? <laughs> so are you? Um, I think I'm, I'm a mixture of every character that I play. I think any actor worth their salt yeah. brings as much of themselves to the character uh, as they need to. And then you fill in the gaps and uh, make the best choices for the situations that you find yourself in. But yeah, Frank Jr. is about 180 degrees different from Tommy mm. Egan, even though they're both trying to do the same game. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well then tell me what you brought to the table when you recently did the video with Nicki Minaj and Lil Baby, and you rapped on a track with DJ k -Slay. Do you have any more plans to do music? And what, what part of you does that come from? You know, I think I'll, uh, I'll leave more of the music to my boss uh, and, and the people that do that full time. But uh, I had a blast. You know, k -Slay is one of my heroes. Oh. Um, he was a graffiti writer uh, who wrote Des One. Um, he's just uh, one of the best in the world. So to meet him was such a sh sh such a huge honor for me. So um, the Nicki Minaj video was was super fun. I love doing that. I'm a fan of Nicki's. I'm a huge fan of Lil Baby's. Even more now after doing the video yeah. because he's such a great human being in real life, and so is she. But in terms of uh, rapping on records. I think that I'll uh, leave that to the pros. Like when I did mine, I heard Millie's and OT The Real, the other two uh, MCs on the track. And um, uh, Slay said, hey, listen, let me have one of my young boys write these 16 bars for you. I said, no, 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 I'll write my own. Ooh. So then he oh, played me their, their, uh, uh, their bars and I was like, uh, let me go back to the drawing board and redo this. <laughs> hold up, hold up, I'm not done you know, yet. <laughs> you're talking about graffiti tagging. What do you think is the biggest misconception when it comes to tagging? You know, I don't know if there is a misconception and I get people hating it because uh, a lot of times like they're back when, you know, I was more active in late 80s, all through the 90s, into the 2000s. There was, a, I think, a little bit more chivalry involved. Like, man, you, you, you didn't really write on churches. You, right. you, you kind of held it down. But I, I think that one of the biggest misconceptions is that it's just it's gratuitous in a way of like you're trying to ruin stuff. And I think that more than trying to ruin anything, I think that it's a it's an urban subculture where uh, usually the, the city's youth want to be seen and heard mm -hmm. more than anything else. And that this is a, a way of showing people, hey, this is where I am. I'm here now. Now you got to see this. Now this is, this is I was there. Yeah, I, I did it. I did it, you know, and I did it for me and for other graffiti writers, really. It's kind of a, kind of a, it's like a little secret hidden language. So cool. I love that you're so passionate about that. But you're also passionate about animals and supporting the New York Animal Rescue. Tell us all about it. Yeah, um, uh, my wife and I, we uh, support financially and um, also uh, in other ways, um, a lot of animals. Um, after Harvey, we were big proponents of um, uh, the ASPCA, mm. um, trying to get funding over there um, when a lot of times when um, unfortunate weather strikes around, I mean, it's just happening more and more with global warming uh, more all over the world. And what we see, there's so many awful things that's happening. And, and obviously in Ukraine, we're seeing what's happening, mm -hmm. of course, to the people, but uh, also to so many of the animals that are displaced. So uh, I think that we just uh, focus on, sometimes this is where we hone into and shine a light on uh, how to help the animals in unfortunate situations, whether it's just in New York or uh, it, where we live or it's uh, wherever things are going bad in the world and try to shine a light on that and That's send incredible. support. That's incredible. Yeah, that we always so forget about the animals, you know. Well, it's switching gears, Joseph, you have to spill the tea about your new film, Fear. Tell me about it. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, 
Jelani, I'm, I'm so excited about it. It is directed by the great Dion Taylor, who also did um, the movie The Intruder that I was lucky enough to be in with Michael Ely, Megan Good, yeah. Dennis Quaid. Uh, he did Fatal, um, Black and Blue. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Dion is one of the most exciting directors that I've ever worked with. So we did this during uh, COVID. Um, where uh, I actually, I had our little COVID cat from bed <laughs> put her in the car, and we made uh, uh, the Aww. journey. There she is, Bernice. Oh my Bernice, my, Bernice, my love bug over there. <laughs> um, we put her in the car, and we drove to Lake Tahoe, and we did this film. This was uh, pre, really pre-COVID uh, restrictions, or whatever you want to say, through the um, Screen Actors Guild, the Writers Guild of America, uh, Directors Guild of America. They didn't really have a plan in place yet. So Hidden Empire Film Group, um, with, led by uh, Roxanne Event and Dion Taylor, put some uh, rules together, pitched them to the to, to these unions. The union said, "All right, we wrote off, off on them. You just have to get our individual members to sign off on them." They did. We had about a sixty-person crew. Uh, we filmed it in eighteen days. Uh, Ti Tip Harris uh, is in it. Andrew King Batch Bachelor. Terrence J, wow. my man, uh, Ido Goldberg, Annie Alonso, Ruby Modine. We just have a stellar cast. It's really scary. And it's, of course, what Dion does best. And he puts in that psychological thriller aspect that uh, I can't wait for it to come out in August. Yeah, neither wow. can we. Cool. That sounds, sounds so great. dope. Yeah. You are such a versatile actor. And the cast of Ozark rec received a SAG Award nomination where you play Frank Cosgrove Jr. on the show. So how is it transitioning into that role? And how do you feel to be nominated? I mean, it's such an honor to be part of that cast. Uh, Julia Garner, who I did most of my scenes yeah. with, is just this young spitfire. She's such a committed actor. Uh, also a lot of fun to be on set with, a great person. Um, you know, I think one of the misconceptions was coming off of power where, you know, you're this lead, Tommy Egan, this strong character that uh, people thought, oh, and then they, you know, and then they give him Ozark, that's cool. I'm like, no, no, I had to audition, uh, you know, at, like everybody else for that role. Oh, I was really no. proud to get the role. But then when I came on set to do the role, um, Jason Bateman was directing and Oof. he, uh, after one take, he stopped and he's like, Jay, Joe, come here. Um, and he's like, uh, you know, I think that uh, it's even, he's even less confident. He's even less together mm. than that. And I'm really happy that I was like, okay, let me listen to Jason Bateman, who I think is a brilliant actor, yes. brilliant director. Yeah. I was a fan of Ozark before I was on it. Yep. And it really helped pull the character even further away from the Tommy character, like yes. we said earlier, like it really is 180 degrees difference. Yeah. Even though this guy's trying to do the same thing that Tommy is doing, gangsterism and moving weight and uh, kind, of, kind of revolving around the underworld, it just turned into this totally, totally different character. And I'm really grateful for Jason yes. Bateman for taking this little character. And, and Chris Mundy too, the showrunner. There's some brilliant writing wow. on that show. I'm just so honored to be part of that cast. I mean, you better show tell. that acting versatility come mm -hmm. through. Okay. I love that. <laughs> you also started Black Fox Productions with your brother Albin. Uh, what type of content can fans expect to see from, from your production company? Well, I was really excited about starting Black Fox because uh, my brother Albin and I really wanted to tell stories um, about Chicago and about the urban experience. And sometimes, and I don't want to get too political or, you know, I do want to watch what, how I'm saying that, but a lot of times I feel like that, that word in itself has been hijacked in some way or it's kind of like, I, I hear something else when I hear urban and um, I think that it's not necessarily the full picture. And we want to kind of say um, urban can be uh, all, you know, Asian and Latin and black and white and rich and poor. And it's more about how do all of these things revolve within this urban environment, you know, for better or for worse. And a lot of the times for worse, but these microcosm societies that we uh, are really, um, are, are getting bigger uh, every day, uh, all across America and all across the world. But we're, we're showing where we're from. Like they always say, uh, when people say, what do I write about? You know, write about what you know. Mm -hmm. So we're writing about what we know and taking on projects mm -hmm. that we're passionate about. Not necessarily Chicago, but we're trying to keep it honed into Chicago, but really kind of um, experiencing uh, what that what that urban experience is is like. And uh, I'm really that. excited with the projects we have in the pipeline. Oh, it's exciting. Now, yes. let's get right to this. The Power Book series has been so successful. Yes. Are you still in touch with your other castmates from the franchise? Yeah, maybe not as much as I would want to be. Uh, a lot of that had to do with COVID. You know, we don't yeah. see each other as much as we can, but Naturi still lives um, uh, 
not too far from me in Brooklyn. Yes. Um, and I was invited to her wedding, but um, unfortunately, uh, speaking of the pandemic, I couldn't make it. Mm. Um, uh, but man, she looked so beautiful. Yes. I'm such a supporter of her and her career. And um, uh, I know that uh, uh, you know many of you guys have known her for a long, long mm -hmm. time. She's mm -hmm. a good person and a really mega talented person. As is Omari Hardwick, who I, you guys did. You guys see that uh, magazine cover that he yes. just did, the thing uh, in Australia. Oh, and see oh, it. it. Like I woke up to it. it was like oh. bam. <laughs> yes. I, I'm, I'm jealous out of my mind. I don't know right. how he does it, but he's in. It's he works hard oil. too. I'll give him that. Like, he's, he's out of control. I gotta step up my game. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love well, it. After being away from home for 20 years, you're back home in Chicago and you're leading the pack and art seems like it's really imitating life for you right now. Anthony Fleming, who plays your half brother JP, is also a real brother to you in life. Like he, you guys are really close. So you guys came up together, right? We did. He is another CCC alum, mm -hmm. um, okay. uh, Columbia College, Chicago. Oh. You know what I mean? We're out there. We're out there. So is our EP. Anthony is an incredibly We've got some successful. Other alums here on set. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I know. I heard. Yeah. Um, but Anthony is a bit of a Chicago legend. Uh, we were in school at the same time. He's part of the Looking Glass Theater Company here in Chicago. Uh, he's just a really good person, but an incredibly talented guy, which he's proving uh, time and again, every episode more and more as JP Gibbs, as my brother. But one of the luxuries of knowing Anthony for, God, uh, I don't even want to go there. You, you all know <laughs> when I was in college. And um, is that I think that there is, this history kind of shows itself. I mean, it's very evident that there's, there's that thing between Tommy and JP that you can't really put your finger on. And I think some of that just manifests itself through us having known each other for quite a long time. And plus he knows when I zig to zag and it's just an absolute, pl it's always fun to work with him every day. Yeah. You know, what have you learned the most about yourself playing the role of Tommy? It's almost hard to answer that. I think that one of the things is, is I think that Tommy wakes up every, people say, how is Tommy still alive in this game and everything? And I think, to me, I think one of the reasons is, is every day he wakes up, he's ready to die. And that's why he lives. Mm, wow. And for me, I think I, it, it shows to me that every day is not guaranteed. Every day is a gift. So and true. playing Tommy has really made that so, so present to yeah. me that every day is so beautiful to be alive and, and thank God and give give praise and love to him yes. for every day that I am on this earth that. and I try to make the most of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Well, last week's episode definitely had us all on an emotional roller coaster and the season finale actually premieres this Sunday. What can the fans expect? Well, Dion Taylor, who directed Fear, also directed the finale. No way. So it is going to be, be twisted. full of, as the original power song says, twists and turns, yep. bumps and bruises. We will live and learn. Yes. Um, but I will say this. All of the alliances and allegiances that have been formed throughout this first season with the Flins, with CBI, with Tommy and the Serbs, with Tommy and Liliana, that all of these things are going to split apart and we're going to see how far these rubber bands can stretch, which ones are going to break. And I will say this, I'll end on this okay. note. Everything that goes up must, must come, come down. down. Ooh, don't say no more, because we got to take oh. our book for force. Take a look. Ooh. Hey. Why are you here? How's he doing? You know, in and out of it. I knew you wasn't going nowhere, so brought you some supplies. Toothbrush, one of them mini cons, and Cheetos, moon pie, and a fresh t-shirt. I hope you like the Cubs. Are you also trying to get me killed? Listen, about DMAC. It's Darnell. That's my son's name. And my nephew. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, Joseph, mm. thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with us today. We know you're busy and we love that you stopped by. Be sure to catch the series finale of Power Book 4 Force on Stars this Sunday. You don't want to miss it.